Welcome to Unhinged Space, Episode 10, Raptor's Special Ability. I'm your host, Timothy Albies. Let's get into it. What a sight. The mighty F1s of the Saturn V. I remember when I was very young, my father would show me things like this. That sparked my interest in space and physics. I dedicate this 10th episode of Unhinged Space to my father, John. Happy birthday, and thank you. Now, let's take a look at the Raptor. The SpaceX Raptor is a full-flow, staged combustion, methane-fueled rocket engine manufactured by SpaceX. The engine is powered by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, rather than RP-1 kerosene and LOX, as used in SpaceX's prior Merlin and Kestrel rocket engines. The earliest concepts for Raptors considered using liquid hydrogen as their fuel rather than methane. Raptor will be used in both stages of the two-stage-to-orbit Super Heavy List Starship System launch vehicle, which is designed to replace all existing SpaceX vehicles, including the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, and the SpaceX Dragon. As part of Starship, Raptor engines are expected to be used in various applications, including Earth orbit satellite delivery market, deployment of a large portion of SpaceX's Starlink mega constellation, and the exploration and eventual colonisation of Mars. Raptor engines began flight testing on the Starhopper prototype in July 2019 and became the first full-flow stage combustion rocket engine ever flown and it also produces the highest combustion chamber pressure ever reached by an operational rocket engine at 330 bar which surpasses the record held by the RD701 rocket engine at 300 bars. The Raptor engine is powered by subcooled liquid methane and subcooled liquid oxygen using a more efficient full-flow stage combustion cycle, a departure from the simpler open cycle gas generator system and liquid oxygen kerosene propellants that the current Merlin engines use. The stated design output for the Raptor engine varied widely during its design process, from a high target of 1.8 million pounds of force of vacuum thrust to the more recent, much lower target of 430,000 pounds of thrust. In its 2017 iteration, the operational engine is expected to have a vacuum ISP of 382 and a sea level ISP of 334. The use of subcooled propellants increases propellant density to allow more propellant mass in tanks. The engine performance is also improved with subcooled propellants. Specific impulse is increased and the risk of cativation at inputs to the turbo pumps is reduced due to the higher mass flow rate per unit of power generated. Raptor aims to be able to deliver long life and more benign turbine environments. Specifically, Raptor utilizes a full flow stage combustion cycle where all the oxidizer with a low fuel ratio will power the oxygen turbine pump and all the fuel with a low oxygen ratio will power the methane turbo pump. Both oxidizer and fuel will be mixed completely in the gas phase before they enter the combustion chamber. Prior to 2014, only two full-flow stage combustion rocket engines had ever progressed sufficiently to be tested on test stands. The Soviet RD-270 project in the 1960s and the Aerojet Rocketdyne integrated powerhead demonstrator in the mid-2000s. Additional characteristics of the flow design are projected to further increase performance and reliability, include eliminating the fuel oxidizer turbine interseal, which is a potential point of failure in more traditional engine designs. Also, lower pressures are required through the pumping system, increasing the lifespan and further reducing the risk of a catastrophic failure. Raptors can increase the combustion chamber pressure thereby either increasing overall performance or by using cooler gases providing the same performance as a standard stage combustion engine but with much less stress on materials thus significantly reducing material fatigue. SpaceX aims at a lifetime use of 1000 flights for each Raptor. The turbo pump and many of the critical parts of the injectors for the initial engine development testing were, as of 2015, manufactured using 3D printing, which increases the speed of development and if testing. The 220,000 foot-pound test stand engine had 40% of its parts manufactured with 3D printing processes. 
In 2019, the engine manifolds were cast from SX300, similar to Inconel, soon to be changed to SX500. The Raptor engine uses a large number of coaxial swirl injectors to admit propellants to the combustion chamber, rather than pintle injectors used on previous Merlin engines that SpaceX mass-produced for its Falcon family of launch vehicles. Raptor also uses dual redundant torch igniters. Initial development testing of the Raptor methane engine components was done at the Stennis Space Center in Hancock County, Mississippi. SpaceX added equipment to the existing infrastructure in order to support liquid methane engine testing. Initial testing was limited to components of the Raptor engine since the 100,000 force test stand at Stennis were not large enough to test the full Raptor engine. The first items tested were single Raptor injector elements, various designs of the high volume gas injectors. The modifications made to the test stands by SpaceX are now a part of the Stannis test infrastructure and are available to other users of the test facility after SpaceX has finished its lease. By August 2016, the first integrated Raptor rocket engine manufactured at the SpaceX Hawthorne facility in California shipped to the McGregor rocket engine test facility in Texas for development testing. The engine had 220,000 foot-pounds thrust, which makes it approximately one-third of the size of the full-scale Raptor engine planned for flight tests in the 2019-2020 timeframe. Raptor is the first full-flow staged combustion Nephilox engine ever to reach a test stand. This 2016 development engine had an expansion ratio of just 150, the maximum possible within Earth's atmosphere to prevent flow separation problems. It performed an initial 9-second firing test on the 26th of September 2016, the day before Musk's talk at the International Aeronautical Congress. By September 2017, the development Raptor engine with 200 bars chamber pressure had undergone 1200 seconds of testing in a ground test stand across 42 main engine tests, with the longest test being 100 seconds. The first version of the flight engine was intended to operate at a chamber pressure of 250 bars, with the intent to raise it to 300 bars at a later time. Elon Musk announced that the new Raptor-powered launch vehicle was planned to entirely replace both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, as well as the SpaceX Dragon, in the existing operational SpaceX fleet in the early 2020s, initially aiming at the Earth orbit market and building towards cislunar and Martian roles. SpaceX intends this approach to bring significant cost savings which will also help the company justify the development expense of designing and building a new launch vehicle design. In addition to orbital spaceflight missions, Starship is considered for the point-to-point -point Earth transportation market with 30 to 60 minute flights to nearly anywhere on the planet. On August 4, 2020, a single Raptor engine propelled a Starship prototype SN5 to an altitude of 150 metres at the Boca Chica test facility. This was the first flight of a full-size Starship prototype. The Raptor engine was mounted off-centre and controlled the Starship during liftoff, a traverse of approximately 100 metres and landing on the secondary pad. The total flight time was approximately 50 seconds. On September 3rd, 2020, the Starship prototype SN6 went to around 150 metres from the Boca Chica test facility. As with Starship SN5, the engine was mounted off-centre and controlled the prototype during the entire flight, which lasted for approximately 45 seconds. December 9, 2020, three Raptor engines propelled the Starship prototype SN8 to approximately 12.5 kilometres from the Boca Chica test facility. The three engines were placed in the centre of the vehicle, unlike in previous prototypes. During this flight, the engines sequentially shut down each by each until the final Raptor underwent shutdown, proceeding to a flop manoeuvre. It did not land, unfortunately. February 2nd, 2021 saw the launch of the SN9 prototype to a height of 10 kilometres from the Boca Chica site. Like its predecessor, it performed admirably, but did not have a successful landing. 
In the next few days, we will see a test of prototype SN10, which Elon tweeted his guest had a 60% chance of a successful landing. I certainly hope so. Kick-Ass thumbnail design was provided by Cyclonics, a 5-star graphics guru. Link to him will be in the description. Unhinged Space now has a Patreon page. There is a $5 a month VIP, $10 a month promoter, $20 a month executive and $50 a month director tier. If you can help out, it would be very appreciated and recognised by myself and those that assist me with this channel. Link will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate the views, likes and shares, but especially comments. I am happy to answer your questions in the comments section. Stay safe and sound everybody. My next episode will be focusing on a space-related cryptocurrency. This will be interesting.